<coughs> yes, I am. All right, wonderful. Because I just remembered I had a mic and I don't have any time to set it up. That's okay. All right, so we will begin. Okay, so I'm Dr. Beecher, and today we're going to talk about the importance of good oral health to self-care. Um, so in the, in the chat, what I'd like you guys to type in are some of the roles of women or some of the roles you have in terms of, you know, your family, in terms of society, and see what you come up with. So in my little scribbling, you can see here, right? These are some of the rules that I've come up with for women in family and in the society. And I'm sure that this is a very abbreviated list. So as Miss Pinnock was just saying that, you know, as women, we take care of everybody else and very often we neglect ourselves, which should not be the case, right? So what is self-care? So this is just a brief definition from the WHO saying that self-care is the ability of individuals, families, and communities to promote their own health, prevent disease, maintain health, and to cope with illness and disability with or without the support of a healthcare worker. For me, when I think about self-care, I think about the, the mind, body, and soul. So the three aspects of our being, our mind, body, and spirit. <clears throat> and each of these needs to be nurtured properly. So as it pertains to dentistry and oral health, I can link at least two of these to self-care. So in terms of oral health and the mind, so in general, how you feel about yourself impacts, you know, how you take care of yourself. And one of the things that we have found is that people who have dental health issues such as gum disease and their teeth might look very long or they may have missing teeth or they may have cavities in the front of their mouth, their self-esteem is greatly affected. And once you don't feel good about yourself, you're less inclined to take care of yourself. All right, so that's how it can impact self-care. Also, uh, mental health month with, uh, came and went the other day. So mental health issues such as depression, they can affect you physically because often people who are depressed, they, when they're at their low moments, they literally feel like they can't do anything. So physically, they neglect themselves and the oral hygiene is one of the things that can get neglected along with the rest of the care for self. Also, increased stress that can lead to abnormal habits or what we call parafunctional habits, like grinding the teeth or clenching the teeth. And it can lead to broken teeth, loose teeth, and it can also lead to pain in the jaw joint, which is called the temporomandibular joint or TMJ for short. Also, a uh, very, you know, not very talked about is bulimia and that's also triggered by stress and you know people's lack of ability to cope with certain situations and that can have harmful effects on the teeth because we see that patients bulimia patients have a lot of wear on their teeth because of the stomach acid constantly bathing the teeth and if it's really bad these patients may need root canals or they may need crowns so Next, we're going to talk about oral health and the body. So not to be sarcastic, all right, but the mouth is a part of the body. I know a lot of people, when they think about the mouth, they think about it in isolation, but things that affect the mouth can affect the entire body. And things that affect the entire body can also affect the mouth. So when we, when we look in your mouth, we may even be able to diagnose issues before, let's say a medical doctor. One of the most recent ones right now is monkeypox because the blisters show up in your mouth actually before anywhere else in the body. The mouth is also involved in two critical systems in our body. One of them is a digestive system. Other one is a respiratory system. And so by examining you, we can detect issues that involve them, for example, if you have problems like sleep apnea, which will affect your breathing, 
that's when you wake up out of your sleep and you're coughing and gasping because you're not getting enough oxygen. It also can manifest in terms of you grinding your teeth. Uh, also, with GERD, again, the stomach acid bathing the teeth can create wear, so we're able to see that. And patients who have chronic sinusitis and those kinds of problems where we can detect them by seeing the patient, looking in their mouth, etc. So this is a very busy diagram, but in essence, it just shows you that whatever happens in the mouth can affect the entire body. So inflammation that happens in the mouth can spread to affect your heart, to affect to, to pass through the bloodstream and create clots, which can give you stroke. It can also create problems like if you have gum disease or periodontal disease, which will explain a little further down, you may have problems as a pregnant woman by having preterm birth or low birth weight for babies, all right? So that's just some of the examples. So there's been this campaign for the longest while with the Ministry of Health in terms of knowing your numbers. So do you know your numbers? The normal, the new normal blood pressure is less than 120 over 80. You to be 120 over 80 now they're saying it's less than that so 115 over 75 is the new normal sorry i'm hearing a lot of pinging in the background i'm not sure what that is that is the admission that's that's how oh. it's set yes that's how the okay. form is set yes all right all right sorry okay so for hypertension no it, you, first time it used to be 140 over 90 now they're saying hypertension is a sustained blood pressure greater than 130 over 80 uh, for the normal blood sugar, the HbA1c is a blood test that it records the last three months uh, of how your blood sugar has been doing. And they're saying that it should be, for normal, it should be less than 5.7. And for diabetics, it should be, I'm sorry, it should be less than 6.5. That's an error there. Sorry about that. Not greater than 6.5. If it's greater than 6.5, you're really not doing something good. Okay, so... Basically, I'm sure you're wondering what's the relevance of all of this to oral health, right? So good gum health has been proven to keep both your blood pressure and your blood sugar more stable. So I encourage my patients who are hypertensive and who are diabetic to come for your regular cleanings because it can help stabilize your pressure and your sugar. Conversely, patients with uncontrolled diabetes, they normally have more severe periodontal disease or gum disease, patients with uncontrolled diabetes also have greater tooth loss as a result of this. Patients with uncontrolled diabetes also have poor wound healing. So again, the mouth is a part of the body. So if you have poor wound healing when you get up on your foot or on your hand, it's going to be the same thing in your mouth, let's say after an extraction. Even when we give you antibiotics, you may still not heal properly. Patients with um, uncontrolled high blood pressure. Uh, I know this may be a little controversial, but not a lot of dental offices check blood pressure. I do, especially before extractions. Other practitioners, because we're health practitioners, we do also. And if your blood pressure is too high, right, then we will defer your treatment, right, which is normally extremely annoying to patients, but it's for the greater good. And it's for your health because we don't we don't want an adverse event, uh, event such as a stroke in the chair. Sorry. So we're going to discuss two of the most common dental issues. And um, normally, when I, I give more talks to children, so I can get to put in a lot of the graphic pictures that make them go ew, gross. But I didn't really do that because I figured it's like around dinner time for most people. Okay. All right, so you heard me talk about periodontal, periodontal. So your periodontium is the, basically the tissues that surround the teeth. So the gums, the ligaments, and the underlying bone. So periodontal disease essentially is the disease affecting this. So there, first of all, the causative agent is something called plaque. And plaque simply is whatever food you eat, when it accumulates on the teeth and your, the bacteria in your mouth start to work on it, it forms a layer called plaque. 
And if you were to rub your tongue over your teeth right now, you'd probably feel a little layer on there, right? So you have the saliva that forms a natural layer on the teeth. And then eventually the food and drink that you consume, it forms this layer on the teeth along with the bacteria in your mouth. Now, the critical part of plaque is that plaque produces the bacteria, they produce an acid after they feed on the food on your teeth. And that acid can lead to cavities. And also they produce other compounds that cause inflammation of the gums. So if you don't remove this plaque on a regular basis, eventually the gums be become red and inflamed. So gingivitis is the early stage where the gums are red, swollen and tender due to lack of plaque removal, right? This is usually reversible, right? Just a point to note, a lot of people say cleaning hot, right? Now, if you are flossing regularly and brushing regularly and removing the plaque, and you don't have gingivitis, a cleaning should not be painful, all right? So that is one of the indicators when cleanings are always painful for you that you may need to improve your oral health. So periodontitis, this is something that happens over time. This is a lower photo. It's something that happens over time with chronic gingivitis. And this will cause the bone under the gums to start to eat away right? The constant inflammation causes the bone, you cause you to lose bone and then the, to the teeth become loose, right? You may, they may even look long as the gums start to recede and there's a distinct mouth odor and you will, it will result in tooth loss if it's not treated. And contrary to popular belief, periodontal disease is actually responsible for more than 50% of tooth loss, not cavities. All right, so next one, what is a cavity? So we just spoke about plaque and the plaque forming the acid, right? And so you have four pictures here which are, show the different stages of cavity formation. So the, the process is called tooth decay and it ranges from you having a white spot on the tooth to having a brown spot on the tooth then that spreading through the, the three layers of the tooth, the enamel, the dentine, and then all the way down to the pulp. Now, the symptoms, you can have no symptoms at all. So some of the times that's one of the reasons you should visit your dentist because we may be the first one to let you know you have decay forming. Then you may have cramp to sweet, then that progresses to cramp to cold, and then that progresses to cramp to hot and cold, or frank pain. So the danger, sorry, the danger with a lot of dental issues is that they're painless to begin with. And then by the time you feel pain, you may be at either stage three or four. You're lucky if you're at stage two and we can still do our filling, but a lot of the times you're at stage three or four. So I had wanted to do a poll here Unfortunately, I don't think we can get it started. Uh, but the question is, when was your last dental visit? No, I have had some patients very recently who were there at least in their 20s and the last dental visit they had was when they were in primary school. Uh, though I have two patients that I can remember who they had never ever visited the dentist before seeing me. And one of them, he is in his 60s, all right? <clears throat> so we are, I use the term post-pandemic very loosely because we really are, we're coming out of the tail end of things, but we're not in the clear. However, we have gone back to some sense of normalcy as it pertains to health care visits, which is good. And what we have been noticing is that most patients, they haven't had dental visits in two years or more, okay? Also, because they have been working from home, remember routine is a great thing. So they've been working from home, so they have lost their routine. So they no longer brush twice a day. They, they used to brush before going to work at least, right? And then the more really motivated ones used to brush before bed. 
but you had it reduced to once a day brushing. Same thing for the children. Also, especially for the children, an increase in snacking due to school from home and for some adults too. So we've been seeing an increase in gum disease and cavities. Uh, we've also been seeing an increase in broken teeth due to stress-related issues, which we spoke about earlier, right? Anxiety and stress due to, um, as I said at the bottom, complicating factors of job loss, right? A lot of people lost their jobs during the pandemic, still have not been able to get them back. It, this, is, this causes great anxiety and stress, and we've been seeing a lot of broken teeth or fractured teeth because of that. Um, another complicating factor Post-pandemic is the rising cost of care because everything has gone up, including supplies. Disposables that used to cost $800 a box for a, a pack of gloves are now costing $2,500 a box. So the increase has been across the board, which has complicated the access to care. All right, so as I was saying before, the danger with dental problems, they're often painless. And by the time you feel pain, your options are very limited. So everybody has a role to play in terms of improving their oral health. And you have the main role to play because you are around your teeth for 365 days of the year. Whereas you may see us once every two, three years. If we're lucky, we may see you twice a year. All right, so your role in oral health is number one, changing the bad habits. So everything is a process, as you know, and change doesn't come quickly and it doesn't come easily, especially the older we get. So try and do small modifications and build up. So dietary habits have to change. Uh, reducing the sugary foods and sugary drinks that you have. And some people do not realize just how much sugar they're consuming until somebody points it out. You drink a Pepsi a day, you drink a cup of tea with sugar, you drink in a cup of tea before bed again with sugar, you're drinking a little sugar and water to pick you up, you're having a, a piece of bun and you're drinking a soda with it. And when, it, when you look at it, it's, it's a lot of sugar throughout the day, right? Um, even more troubling, I see the kids, I'm sure a lot of you are mothers, I see the kids walking to school in the morning with a bun in one hand and a soda in the other hand. So that's double sugar, all right? Also, damaging habits, removing damaging habits like opening the bottles with the teeth, chewing bones. I know it's a big one. That's one of the toughest ones for any Jamaican to break. I've had patients war with me, quote unquote, war with me over it. But chewing bones is very harmful to the teeth. Chewing ice, cracking crab shells, even if you have a habit of chewing a lot of very crunchy nuts, it can do damage, especially if you have fillings, All right? Also, just want to point out, stopping smoking, that's a very big issue. And smoking is also a contributory factor to gum disease. And smokers have been found to have worse, worse levels of gum disease than non-smokers, okay? Also, excessive drinking, that should be cut. Hygiene habits, such as falling asleep without brushing, it's a big one. Your mothers, your caregivers, you're probably studying also, you're tired, right? You fall asleep before the kids sometimes, the kids fall asleep before you sometimes, nobody remembers to brush, everybody just so tired. You have to hurry up and wake up in the morning, four o'clock, five o'clock to do it all over again. But falling asleep without brushing is one of, the very big problem. We'll talk about that later. All right. Also, I would be remiss if I did not point out, please avoid untrained and unlicensed people, such as people doing the fake veneers, the fashion braces. Okay. Very, very, very damaging to teeth. You may get some correction, yes, because at the end of the day, they are braces. They will exert a force on your teeth, but... Uh, when you come to see us and the damage is done, sometimes it's just extraction. So please don't go that route. Also, avoiding do-it-yourself bleaching like the lime and the baking soda and the charcoal and it, there, it can be very damaging to your gums and the teeth and increase sensitivity. 
So apart from getting rid of the bad habits, you need to try and incorporate the good habits. So good habits would include brushing twice a day, flossing, using fluoride. So most toothpaste in there have fluoride except for the herbal toothpaste, right? Um, also, a professional cleaning is recommended two times a year, unless you have a special circumstance like you have gum disease or you have braces, then we recommend it more often. Eating fruits and vegetables whole as opposed to juicing them. That is also very key. So when you juice fruits, that's when you release more of the sugar. All right. So eating fruits and vegetables whole is better for you than juicing them. Drinking lots of water, all right? And also chewing sugar-free gum. And the sugar-free part is a critical part. So for the gum, the extra, the dentine, the eclipse, can't think of any other brands off the top of my head. The sugar-free gum, what it does is that when you chew gum, it stimulates your saliva. And there is bicarbonate of soda in your saliva right so then bicarbonate in your saliva and it helps to neutralize the acids produced from the bacteria so once you're if you're on the road and you can't get to brush or floss or anything chewing sugar-free gum and stimulating that saliva can actually help to fight against cavities which is very important okay so what are the best ways to practice hygiene good hygiene at home first of all you want to make sure your body can see it says extra soft there, right? So you want to make sure you're using a soft toothbrush. But the, the soft don't feel like it's a clean off the food off of my teeth. Number one, that is mental. Number two, you're probably not spending enough time brushing to clean off all the food. Number three, if you don't think the soft is getting off the food, you can use an electric toothbrush. Let's see if this video is going to play. Oh, Lord. Why does it look like the video doesn't want to play? Hold on. All right. It was a video that was supposed to play here, and I'm not sure why it's not playing. Okay. So I was going to show you a video of an electric toothbrush, which is what I recommend for a lot of my pediatric patients. It normally helps to motivate them because it's something that's novel. Conversely, I recommend it for a lot of my adult patients, for the ones that don't think a soft brush is doing a good enough job for them. Also for the older patients who lose dexterity as they get older, that's something very, very good to help get the extra plaque off of the teeth. All right, so flossing. Now, any type of floss, any brand, it doesn't matter. I'm just putting these brands up here for reference. As long as it is waxed, it will do the job. The ones in the middle, the floss on the stick, I hate them. However, once you use it regularly, it's better than nothing. And the reason I hate it is because if you look, it has a little, a little tip like this, right? So if you have, let's say you have gum disease and the gum has receded, and instead of being up here, the gum is down here and it's, it's going to buck on the tooth, right? The top of the teeth is not going to get to slide all the way down under the gum where you need it to go. That's why I don't like them. But as I said, if you, if you use it regularly, it's better than nothing. So on the right of the screen, you'll see something called a proxy brush. And I recommend, it's recommended for patients with braces, yes but it's also recommended for patients that have wider spaces in their teeth. So they're no more widely available than before uh, at the bigger pharmacies like the Monarch, the, the Lee's Pharmacy, um, York sometimes has them, most of the big pharmacies. And I normally sell them at my office and I found that they're quite helpful. So this is supposed to be okay thankfully this video will play so this brushing is, alone is not enough so this is something else that i recommend for patients called a water pick don't know if you've ever heard of it if you just brush food and debris get left behind the water pick water flosser is the easy and most effective way to clean between teeth to get started follow these simple steps 
Fill reservoir with warm water and place firmly on the base. Select a tip that's right for you. Click firmly into handle. If this is your first use, you'll need to prime the pump. Number 1. Set the pressure control to high. Number 2. Point the tip into the sink. Number 3. Turn on until water flows. Number 4. Turn unit off. Now let's get on to water flossing. Start with lowest pressure setting. Lean over the sink and place the tip in your mouth. Turn unit and water on. Partially close lips to prevent splashing and let water flow from your mouth into the sink. Aim the tip at the gum line. For best results, start with your back teeth. Move along gum line, pausing briefly between teeth. Floss front and back side of teeth for one minute a day. The Waterpick Water Flosser removes up to 99.9% .9 of plaque from treated areas and is up to 50% more effective than string floss. You can have healthier gums and brighter teeth with the Waterpick Water Flosser. Right. So I don't know about some of the claims they're making like better than actual manual floss, but I know in special circumstances Brushing alone I know in special circumstances the water pick is quite helpful. So if you have bridges that you need to clean under, if you have braces or permanent retainers from having done orthodontic treatment, they're very good at getting under those. And if you're just lazy, it's better than nothing. Just a routine that you will stick to is better than nothing. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to recap the recommendations. So a soft toothbrush twice a day. It should not be a medium. It should not be a hard. Go strip the gum, and you can end up with a lot of sensitivity when you try to enjoy your whole foods, and you can make actual grooves in the teeth by brushing too hard with these brushes. Also, when you're brushing, you should spit out the toothpaste instead of rinsing keep the fluoride on the teeth for longer, all right? No food or drink after brushing, right? When you're going to bed, all right? When you go to sleep, what happens? Remember we said that the saliva helps to protect your teeth and neutralize the acid. And when you go to sleep, your saliva flow, it decreases, right? So if the amount of saliva in your mouth decreases, that's why when you wake up, sometimes your mouth is dry. That means that the bacteria and the acid, they're just having fun all night on your teeth and you will get more cavities that way. So fluoride toothpaste for the entire family, from the baby all the way down to mommy and daddy, all right? For the children, for the babies, it's a much smaller amount of fluoride, but fluoride is recommended from the start to help fight cavities. You can look it up online. The old recommendation was fluoride free. But nowadays, fluoride for everybody, unless your child is eating the toothpaste. All right, so fluoride mouthwashes are also helpful. The purple Listerine, it, it, it has fluoride. That's why I tend to recommend it. They used to have an act for children on the market with fluoride, but I don't see it anymore. <clears throat> and you can use this at a separate time of the day. Let's say you don't have time to brush at lunchtime. You just, you just rinse with some mouthwash instead and that gives you extra fluoride throughout the day. If you don't have your mouthwash on you, you don't have a toothbrush, you don't have floss, simply rinsing out with some water after you eat can help get rid of some of the food on the teeth. Also, the recommendation is for you to floss daily. You can start with, with just flossing a few times a week, right? Just get into the habit of flossing and you'll be surprised. A lot of people tell me that when they floss, their gums bleed, and so they are scared. The reason they are bleeding is because uh, the gums are inflamed, okay? So when something is red and inflamed and tender, it's going to bleed. And when you keep flossing, the bleeding goes away, which is a sign that the gums are getting healthier. So keep flossing through the bleeding, all right? Visit the dentist every six months. And because a lot of you are mummies, take the children by the first year to the dentist. The old recommendation was three years old, right? But se for several years now, the American Dental Association has recommended that the children visit the dentist 
by the time they get their first teeth or at the very least when they're one year old, even if it's just for an examination and just for advice. Because what we find is that the children get cavities. By the, um, by the time they're three, they can have a mouthful of cavities and need multiple extractions. So you see, we can't, because we, we're, we're so used to giving care to children, we can't even have a discussion about self-care for women without mentioning children. All right. All right, so the role of the dentist in all of this, and um, this is, these photos were taken for a promotion that we just had the other day for Gustaza. So they were given with the permission of our staff members, so not to worry. Uh, the role of the dentist, so it involves screening, right? ensuring compliance with medication because we are healthcare providers also, um, diagnosing oral disease, restoring oral health, referrals and encouragement. And apparently I need to work on the last one because a patient of mine told me that I was stingy with my compliments. Okay, so in terms of diagnosis, I know a lot of people are very hesitant about doing x-rays, but these, these are just to show you what x-rays can pick up. So in the circled areas and the areas with arrows, the x-rays are pointing to cavities, which are the shadows on the diagrams, right? So on the, for the, the very left, I think I can point, a stylus tooth. So on the very left, on the very, oh yes, okay. On the very left with the two circles, the white areas are the fillings and the shadows under there as decay under those fillings. So for the next diagram now with the arrows, inside of the white area between the teeth, you're seeing the dark shadow, that is decay and that's some very serious decay there. All right, and the very last one is just showing you what the tooth looks like when we examine it and then when we do the x-ray, that very dark shadow there above the other dark shadow that looks like an M, that's a cavity sitting right above the nerve and may need either extraction or root canal and frighteningly so because this is a, it's a very young patient. So, thought I should mention this chart, let me zoom it, okay. So a lot of people nowadays have concerns about radiation and rightfully so, but dental x-rays give a very, very, very low dose of radiation, okay? Especially the newer technologies. So just to show you, you get radiation from eating a banana, right? And you get less radiation from a dental x-ray than a flight from New York to Los Angeles, right? And you get less uh, radiation from a dental x-ray than you been around your phones, your microwave, everything for an entire day, okay? So that's the importance of this diagram here. So we were talking about functions of the dentist in terms of restoring health, aesthetics, and function. Sometimes that's just by doing a single restoration. On the left, this patient, um, he gave permission for his thing to be on our Instagram. So we actually did a denture for him and it helped to really restore his confidence with his smile. And this young miss here, we did a, uh, we did a filling for her and that also helped to restore her confidence. So these are just pictures of things that I have done over the years. And each of them involves teeth at the front of the mouth, as you can see, well, most of them, not all. And in fixing these, we have helped to restore patients' confidence quite it's a bit, okay? So where can you find me? Um, I am at Casdent Dental. I have been there since 2011. And we have two offices. We have one at Central Avenue. That's ruled by Kings Plaza and Popeyes. Don't know if anybody knows Sonia's. We're on the same avenue. And we have one at Apex Medical Center upstairs. And I am also... In Linstead, 